Hi, I'm Jeremiah Freidel, Innovative Technology Product Manager with Acres Equipment. Today we're going to dive into the John Deere Exact Emerge Meter, your key meter for pinpoint planning accuracy. We're going to go through how to optimize and how to adjust this meter for peak performance. Now let's take a look. The Exact Emerge Meter is the heart of this planner technology. The Exact Emerge Meter utilizes a brush belt to deliver the seed down to the seed trench. Let's look inside the components and see how it works. Some of the key components on an Exact Emerge Meter are the seed bowl, your agitation strips, and your double eliminators. The seed bowl is unique by design As the seed comes in and sets down in the pocket, the agitation strips are sitting here while the paddles here kind of help and pick and move that seed to keep it moving. Vacuum pulls the seed into the holes, brings it up through here, and your double eliminators, you have an inner and an outer, help knock off the excess seed. That then moves over to here, vacuum is dropped, your um, knockout wheel takes and pokes the seed into the brush belt and the brush belt delivers that seed down to the row. This technology allows us to drop the seed right in the seed trench where it belongs, eliminating the chance of any seed bounce, seed roll, things like that. That is why this meter can plant very accurately up to 10 miles an hour. You don't have to go 10 miles an hour but it will plant accurately up to that. Even at your normal planting speed, six, six miles an hour, five and a half miles an hour, this meter performs very well. Some of the adjustments we can do as we're working on this and looking it over before season, the checks that you want to do are, first of all, you should be storing all your seed bowls off the planter. This planter here doesn't have any seed bowls in, we had winterized it after season. Um, so this is the bowl that I grabbed and brought along. Before you put your seed bowls in, you're gonna to wanna to inspect the wear surfaces on the outside of the seed bowl. Another place you're gonna to wanna to inspect is your meter housing itself. If you look closely, there are three porcelain wear points on this meter housing. In that meter housing, on them, on them porcelain wear points, you're gonna find a little tiny divot. If you cannot see that divot anymore, those need to be replaced. The other thing you need to check is what we call hub height. This holds true to our previous and our other current uh, Promax 40 meters as well. When you install your seed bowl, you're gonna to wanna to install it, lock it in place, and when you spin the seed bowl, you should be able to spin it with some resistance. If that meter turns too hard, the meter's gonna drag, which can cause some um, high, amp volt, high amp draw errors and shut the meter off. It can also affect its, the way it plants. If the bowl is too loose, the vacuum might not be able to suck the bowl in where it needs to, and you might not be able to hold the seeds as they need to be held. So when you adjust it, you lock the bowl on, you wanna spin this wheel with some resistance. If it is out of adjustment and you need to adjust it either closer or further away, you can simply, let me set this down, simply pull this pin, and turn the hub to the next hole. As you can notice in here, there's a few extra grooves. There's also a series of holes inside of the um, shaft that comes through that meter. So turn it to where you want it, check it, put your pin back in. After you get it in, one thing you wanna double look at, because when you pull this pin out and put it in, sometimes it is very easily to catch this rubber seal and come off, the seal comes off very easily. You need to make sure that this inner seal is intact and in its place where it needs to be before you put the bowl on. So after you adjust it, simply reinstall the bowl again 
lock it in place, and spin it so you have some resistance. The next portion of this meter that I'm gonna to touch on and go over is your agitation strips. So you have the ability to run two separate agitation strips. Every crop is differently, so look in your operator's manual when you're switching back and forth through crops to find out what agitation strip is needed for the crop that you're going to plant. In this case here right now, we have the smooth agitation strip in place. So inspect the agitation strip. They do wear, um, they are a long life item, but they do eventually wear. When you do change out your agitation strips, there is, here, let me, we'll pull the meter off here to make it a little easier to access. So when you do replace the agitation strip, on the back side, you'll notice there's three tabs. So those three tabs, you need to push down and push out to remove that strip. So after you remove the strip, then you can go ahead and make sure you clean it up before you put it in the bag or wherever you're gonna store it. And before you put your other strip in, whether you're swapping them out or replacing it, make sure you get in here and clean out all the excess seed treatments, dirt, dust, debris, things like that, that uh, form in there. And when you put the new one back in, line your holes up, get it in place, and snap it in. One thing to note, when you slap it in, snap it in, you do have to kind of get a little, not necessarily rough with it, but make sure you're moving it around so it is in all the way on both sides. Look at the bottom of it, make sure there's not a gap there. Um, if there's a gap there, there's a good chance that you didn't get all the debris cleaned out behind of it. So make sure you get that all cleaned out and get it snapped in place, okay? The next place to look at, to adjust and to check, is your inner and outer double eliminator. The outer double eliminator on this meter is not adjustable. In 2024, through parts, it was released that you can now order a outer double eliminator that is adjustable. That adjustable outer double eliminator is more so gonna be used for, um, I would say like Milo, things like that, small seeds that you really wanna singulate on. Sometimes popcorn, I've seen some people use it in, when they're planting popcorn if they're having a hard time getting their singulation to where they want it and you can't get enough adjustment out of this, then you can opt and go to a outer adjustable double eliminator. Like I said, this outer double eliminator is not adjustable. What you wanna do is look at all your bristles on the outer, make sure they're in good shape. Um, we had some meters in the past that these bristles will, if you leave the bowls in, they will get bent over. And when that happens, they're bent the wrong way. And as that seed goes through, that outer eliminator is more, more aggressive than it should, and it knocks too many seeds off, then you're gonna show a bunch of skips um, on your display as well. So inspect that, make sure that looks good. As it wears, kind of look at it. If you have a meter that's not planting right, uh, don't, be, don't forget to look at the outer one. That one gets uh, overlooked quite often. The other one is your inner double eliminator. This one here is the one that you will always adjust to change when you change from crop to crop and when seed size is changed and you're not able to adjust. When you look at your outer eliminator, or inner eliminator, excuse me, you'll notice that there are three lines close together and one further away. In corn, you're going to start with it on the middle. If you have smaller seed or you're having a problem with uh, your singulation being too low or you're getting doubles, you're gonna wanna move this up a little bit 
to help knock some of them doubles off. If you are getting too many skips, you're going to want to drop this down to lessen the aggressiveness to prevent those skips. There is a brush style inner double eliminator available through uh, parts as well. This brush style was actually utilized on the first uh, uh, rendition of these seed meters when they first came out. That brush meter now is more designed for sorghum, milo, crops like that. If you move the outer double eliminator all the way down to that other line that we talked about, that pretty much moves it all the way away, so you're not gonna have much um, contact with the seed at all. Another thing to not forget when you are getting single skips and multiples, before you go back to your seed meters, if you have it all the way across the board, if every meter, if the whole planter is planting low, you're having skips or doubles on the whole planter, the first thing I would suggest to try to do is work with your vacuum. So if you can drop, if you're getting a lot of doubles and you drop your vacuum a few pounds and those doubles go away, that's gonna save you a lot of time of stopping and going through and checking all your meters. A good starting point is in corn is to go ahead and just set that in the middle and start. And you can try to tweak your vacuum up and down from there to maximize how those row units work. But if you cannot get it to where you need it, you may need to come back and adjust your inner double eliminator to help uh, with your skips and doubles. So moving on, as the seed comes through here, it comes over to your brush belt. When it gets to your brush belt, a couple things happen. On your lid, we talked about this earlier, is there's a seal that's all the way around the outside of the lid. This seal helps maintain constant vacuum on the seed bowl. If you are getting a meter, or having issues with a meter that is having a lot of skips, planting low, one of the first things to look is open the door, look at the seal. Inspect the seal, make sure it is in place all the way around. For example, if you look close to this meter, this one here, that seal's pulled out a little bit. So make sure you push that seal in and that it's in its place where it needs to be. Also, look for any excessive wear points, tears, things like that, hardness. These seals do last a lot longer than they used to, but they still will deform and get hard um, if they're abused or in, in uh, improper or kind of more aggressive conditions. So as the seed comes through, as it's moving around the meter, it eventually gets to your brush belt. When it gets to the brush belt, two things happen. One, you loot drop vacuum after it passes the seal. Two, your knockout wheel takes that seed and pushes it into your brush belt. This knockout wheel is the same knockout wheel used for both your corn and your soybean bowls. If you are going to be planting sorghum, milo, smaller seeds, those bowls, those do require a different knockout wheel. The knockout wheel itself is very easy to change. You no longer have the bolts and screws that you used to have years ago. Simply pull the lockout tab and pop it out. When you go in with it, you can only go in one way. There's a notch, a little peg right at the bottom, and there's a notch right here on the knockout wheel. Slide your knockout wheel in, snap it in place and you're good to go. <laughs> Make sure it spins freely. One thing that you need to look at or I like to do um, at the beginning of the season before I put it in, you can also do this at the end of the season when you take the bowls out, is take the bowls, lay them down. This here is a brand new bowl, so it has the graphite on it. But if you look close to this bowl, the appearance and the texture is different from here to here. This part of the bowl has basically a graphite, uh, nonstick dry graphite spray on it. 
Um, I like to take the bowl, spray it with, take a can of John Deere graphite spray, spray the bowl, coat it, make sure when you coat it, make sure you coat it really thin and evenly so there's no runs. One thing that I have ran into in the past is if you don't let it dry or put it on too thick, that graphite becomes sticky. And when that peels off, the seal peels a lot of that sticky graphite out, and then it'll also get stuck in these knockout wheels. When that happens, it causes excessive drag on the meters themselves, and you'll have meters that will shut themselves off because the load's too high, or you'll have meters that are misplanting and, and screw things up. So the biggest thing is, point I wanna get across is if you're gonna spray graphite spray on there, which I do suggest doing, make sure it's a light coat, make sure you don't put it on too thick, and make sure it dries properly before putting it back on.